What's up, everybody? I'm Alex Wilkinson here with Pack Pride. Today, I'm talking to Amanda Busick, who is a reporter for the NHRA of Fox Sports, a podcast host, a 2008 graduate from NC State. I know I left a lot <laughs> off, and you have a whole bunch of hats you wear for the motorsport world, but how are you doing today? Good. Thank you, Alex, for allowing me to be here. Actually, 2008 graduate, but the first time I've stepped into this facility, so a lot has changed since I've been here, but it's the same old look back. That's really awesome to hear. So let's get started. Uh, first with a simple question, tell me a little bit more about yourself and like where you're at. Gosh, 2010, went to New York City, was in Chicago, Boston, LA, started in motorsports while in LA. And then now I travel around the country, sometimes the world doing motorsport. Looking back at your time at NC State, how do you feel that that helped prepare you to where you are today? It's exactly what I'm doing, what I'm doing today. I did uh, one of the first students to graduate from NC State with a concentration in entrepreneurship. And the reason why that was so key, right when I graduated, the recession happened. And we had professors in that program that always emphasize do what you love and the money will come or never, if you do what you love, you never work a day in your life. And I had no idea that I would end up in media. But when I graduated to essentially no job, I kind of rested on my laurels and went back to doing video projects around Raleigh. I uh, ended up doing the Jimmy V Golf Classic of all things. And my first reel, I had Shaquille O'Neal on it, Charles Barkley. Drove up to New York City, got a job at a restaurant, uh, worked at a steakhouse at night in Manhattan, and then interned for a sports agent during the day. And that's truly how it happened. So for me, NC State was everything in the progression of where I'm at now. And it's kind of rooted in, in who I get to be in this space of motorsports as well. Yeah, that's awesome. And that's crazy. Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> Uh, it was like this, like I'm this size, he's this size. So I'm not even in the frame, but I promise it was me doing the interview. <laughs> So how did you get involved with the Pack of Wolves NIL Collective? Yeah, truly, it was an honor. I got uh, Hayes Lancaster reached out on see if I would be interested. And I think Hayes has kind of followed my career for the last couple of years and seeing my trajectory in the space of media. We actually share a couple of uh, mutual friends within the Wolfpack community as well that are in the media space and entertainment. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's just the idea that at this stage in my career, I can have some influence and impact back onto some of our student athletes and help them get ready for interviews just like this and, and be ready to showcase who they are, what they are, what they stand for, and their authentic presentation as student athletes. Yeah, so that like branding aspect. Absolutely. So there are a ton of former student athletes involved in this, like Scott Wood and like many others. Um, so what would you say about like how this is going to help um, those that don't necessarily want to continue in sports after school, but want to get involved in like sports media and stuff and like how um, specifically like with your uh, major with the entrepreneurship, like how do you think that can push student athletes into finding a career in like sports media? Oh goodness, I think it's exactly at the root of one of the pillars of what we're going to stand for in this. You know, there's, I come from the media side and from the production side, but the idea that we can pass on these skills and trades to the next generation. Uh, you know, I, I'm not going to be doing this forever. I hope I have uh, several more years on my plate, but there's going to be another generation that's hungry and fighting and wants to come into these roles. And uh, the idea that that can be someone from NC State and part of the Wolfpack. The thing that I love about student athletes is there's just no quit, right? When you have an athletic background, there's just a difference in um, kind of the approach to the day, understanding rehearsals and practice. And I just think that it's kind of a natural fit if someone chooses to go the media route. Uh, most times athletes are interviewed. Uh, they already have some sort of interaction with the media or that kind of um, ability to check off that back a little bit. So we're just here to help hone those skills and uh, see what's next for them. All right, so why is it so important to have representation across uh, men's and women's sports, especially when it comes to the NIL? I don't only think that it's important, it's, it's, it's exactly what has to happen, it's necessary. It's far too long, women's sports have been slightly underpaid attention to, unless it's kind of the big three of women's sports. But, you know, I was working on a project within the last year where we were comparing the men's college basketball tournament to the women's college basketball tournament. And we all know the discrepancies that exist there just simply from a photo that was shared from weight rooms. Well, when you look at the numbers and you look into uh, the performance of the property from a media standpoint, 
the women's basketball tournament is actually a growing property. And this sports environment, whenever you have cord cutters, when you have people that are tuning into um, coverage in different ways, whether streaming or a second screen, the idea that you have this property that is continuously year over year growing, that shows you that people are interested in women's sports and are paying attention. So I think it's just the, uh, it's past time, but it's the right time. And to be kind of saddled up with that knowledge to go forward, um, there's 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 no men and women's. It's a collective, and we're all together on it. Yeah, definitely. So, what would you consider um, the unique situations that women have to go through with this? Ah, uh, within terms of the NIL stuff, in terms of what they can do to represent themselves. Yeah, that and just like women in sports. You know, I think the most important, and I and I use this word a lot, but I think in terms of just authentic exposure and representation, uh, and that goes for men and women, but I think women especially. There was a, if you go look it up, it's it's classic. There was a LPGA athlete that was interviewed just within the last week and it was a male interviewer and he asked her well we saw the trainer working with you is everything okay and she said frankly it's that time of the month and it was you know we face these things but the idea that now we can talk about things that happen within the lives of women and uh, we can approach what things look like and and not have to hide away from things but I think back to the authenticity standpoint sometimes we try to fit the mold of what other people want us to be and I think it's such a, a great time in the environment especially when you look at pack of wolves and the support that that this group is going to provide for student athletes go be yourself um, learn to to fly your own colors and fly your own spirit and I, I think that that is what's going to relate with in the community and within brands and sponsorship opportunities that could exist for them as well. Yeah, that's really awesome that you guys um, are like emphasizing that aspect. Cause like I know being a student athlete at NC State, our coaches, our teammates, our support staff, everybody like wants you to be you. Everybody accepts you the way that you are. So it's really important that you guys are like focusing in on that. <laughs> Got to. So what are some of the interesting ways you think that uh, the NIL can help student athletes? Uh, I think it opens up an entire door for someone to be essentially their own business. So in, in having that entrepreneurship background, and in a way, I'm my own business. Uh, I represent myself in my contracts and represent myself. Uh, it's my name that is on broadcast in, in motorsports. And in a similar standpoint for these student athletes, they now get to represent themselves as themselves. So you're a uh, independent contractor, so to say, and the idea that you're selling yourself uh, that just uh, adds the layer of the protection from, hey, you're a student athlete. Well, what does that look like after? Well, you've already established that. You already have a business that's generating, um, hopefully, revenue for yourself and um, of yourself. So the idea that that can just propel forward, um, that's, I mean, NIL is huge. It's a shame that we're just now uh, entering into what it's going to look like. But someone had to do it and it's 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 falling on the backs of the student athletes that we have right now uh but good for them for for tearing the door right open and walking through okay so we're seeing these massive nil deals across the board seeing how athletes are branding themselves on platforms like social media how important is it for a student athlete to brand themselves it's the whole key of it right uh, your name, your image, and your likeness is everything, uh, especially in the social media world. You look at Instagram, you look at TikTok, you look at Facebook or Twitter, whatever platform someone is is using for themselves. But it is, what does it say on there? It says your name, it says what you do, and then it's image photos of yourself. So I think from a sponsorship side, uh, the ability, and it goes back, we've been talking about it throughout this interview, it's that authenticity of self, it's that representation of self. So, you know, people aren't just, you know, were you just an athlete? No, you're probably, I don't wanna assume, but you're probably a sister, you're a daughter, you're a cousin. So people have layers to themselves. And I think that's where social media comes into play and where sponsorship comes into play. We're not just, in your case, you're not just an athlete. I am. There's more to me, and these are my interests. This is what I like, and this is how you can help me be better at being me. Yeah, and I think that's like a really important aspect because for so long, like these student athletes, they're seen as machines performing. 
But with this branding, like you get to see what's behind the athlete, who they are off the field, what they represent, what's important for them. What do you do in your free time? Um, well, I have tons of internships and stuff, but I also act and I model, but I also like to be with my family and stuff like that, which is a very important part of who I am. Exactly. That's exactly the kind of the point of it. It's, you know, while I am this and here's me on the field or here's me on the track, uh, I am a person and this is why you should care about me. Exactly. (laughs) So what makes the pack of wolves different from other collectives? Uh, you know, I think that in the in the same vein, you know, a collective, at the word goes to the point of, hey, we're here to be part of this with you so you're not alone. But I think in terms of the, the direction where this group is going and just knowing the leadership that's a part of it, our executive direct, director, Scott Wood, being a former athlete, uh, Hayes Lancaster, who has been part of the NC State family for a super long time, is as well as our student athletes that are on the advisory board. I think we're just here to say, hey, not only are we part of this with you, we're your family. And I've really taken to that in the idea that I can pass on some skills and trades that I've learned along the way uh, to help these guys when they're in situations that uh, may not uh, be comfortable at first, but let's get you on board. Let's get you ready so that when you are working on your brand, you are working on your image, that when they get interviewed, uh, they're standing here in a place that feels comfortable and safe for them and representing themselves. So it's part of that ecosystem that we're all living in that uh, makes sense as this goes forward. But with, uh, with the Pack of Wolves, we stand on four pillars. Uh, That is representation to the student athletes. Uh, It's transparency. That's the key in all this, right? Like I think as we all kind of seek out these unknown waters of what's going to happen. You have to have that genuine one-on-one and the openness of what all this is going to look like. It's compliance and knowing what's happening with the NCAA and being up to date on it. And it's also the collaboration. Where does this go together? Who do we know that we can help uh, to support the student athlete? Or who does a student athlete know that can come to us to enhance the pack of wolves? We are all in this together, whether you're a donor, whether you're a student, whether you're family members, or whether you're the student athlete, and that's the key to this group. Yeah, I mean, it goes back to what NC State always says, strength is in the pack. So for the last question, how can um, the NC State community get involved in the pack of wolves? You know, I think the first part of it is just becoming aware of what we are and what we stand for. You know, I think that uh, as, you know, this whole NIL stuff, I, you hear the word, and I think it just sounds scary. And I think it's been this thing that's been debated uh, throughout the country and publicly for so long. Uh, but I think we all understand and recognize that the health and the 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 security around our student athletes are, it's a win-win for everyone. So I think the awareness of Pack of Wolves first, like go on the website, go on social media, see what we're about. You're gonna hear from the student athletes that are currently in the collective. You're going to see members like us and uh, your former athlete, Scott Wood, representing this group. So how can you not like Scott, right? He's just always smiling, he's happy. So uh, that's, I would say, you know, go into it, uh, research and find out what we're about, who we are, and then join us. Uh, We're all part of this ride and and to better serve the athletes, uh, it takes a community support. And uh, as you said, there's nothing better than the strength of this wolf pack. Well, that is Amanda Busick. Thank you so much for talking about the Pack of Wolves and what you guys are and what you represent and how that's going to help our student athletes. This is Alex Wilkinson with Pack Pride. Go Pack!